probably not. Okay, so we are live with um, an amazing individual. I have so many questions. Um, I know you probably have questions as well that we weren't able to get to on air. Um, we had so many callers that we weren't able to get to on air. I do apologize, but uh, nonetheless, um, he mocked. You have a mohawk. Why do you have a mohawk, and what is a mohawk, and what does it mean? <laughs> Babcock. It's um, I'm at war. I'm at war, and for my people, it's only worn during war. So it's not a mohawk. It's a. Well, that's what it's called up here in the Algonquin territory. In the southern region, is Bobcock. Bobcock. Mm -hmm. A cock is a cock, a fowl, a bird. I didn't even think about that. Mm -hmm. I didn't even think. And it means that you are at war. Yes. And right but now, you are at war with who? At war with the institution, with the United States federal government concerning tribal people. So, uh, a conversation that you and I had off air, and um, it also echoed with, um, I have the hardest time pronouncing his name, Wom Wampa Mequin. Wampa Mequin. Yes. Um, about indigenous peoples being killed in Brazil, indigenous peoples being slaughtered all over the world. What does NAAIP do for those indigenous persons? This is the first year that we've actually began entertaining, working with indigenous groups in other countries. And the initial phase of what we're doing involves their developing their trust relationships with those countries. Mm -hmm. Uh, as I was explaining to you upstairs concerning the Tribal Trust Charter. We've established trust charters for Brazil, Colombia, South America, for the Dominican Republic, for Puerto Rico, and we're working on uh, Ethiopia right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so those people in those other places, we are working with the United Nations to actually implement the United Nations Indigenous Peoples policy um, in those countries because we have we've learned a few techniques about implementing the policies um, and because we are the premier institution in the United States implementing policy the United Nations has taken notice of the things that we're doing so we're actually being pushed into those other countries by the UN Mm, that's a beautiful thing. Yes, it is. Um, so as of, so I'm not going to ask who your age, but you guys see this beautiful man, Black I'm Don't 57. Crack, 57 years old, and is the founder of NAAIP. And I asked this question again. And I'm single. And, and he's single. He, he has adornments on around his neck. He's trying to give to a queen. <laughs> My question is, and I asked this question upstairs, prior to you, who was fighting for this group who was fighting because when when you think about the civil rights um, and all those that walked and fought uh, for African Americans who fought in in and protested on behalf of Aboriginal no one no one prior to you no one no one non-existent the internet brought about massive changes. It brought me to a place where I could study and learn all this information and then go to these institutions and agencies in DC to research and gain more information. So did you know as a child that you were a Native American or Aboriginal American? In 2009, I um, was working with Turk from the Hot Boys uh, actually, 2007, Turk was arrested for um, uh, allegedly shooting police officers in the city of Memphis. And I was hired by his attorney to um, uh, bring in the media and billboard. And I brought in all of the publications and magazines and the police 
decided um, that they would attack me. So they attacked me and, and uh, kicked my doors in. And I began a fight with the police uh, in the courts, uh, defending myself and um, didn't know what I was doing. And, uh, but I continued the process. And after, actually after uh, uh, the first six weeks of dealing with the courts, they, they scared the hell out of me. So I ran and I, I moved from Memphis to Atlanta and I stayed in Atlanta for two years with a warrant. But the two years that I was there, I studied, I studied, I studied, I stayed on the internet and I studied two years straight. And then I went back to Memphis and I filed a lien against the judge that had my case. His wife signed the lien by accident and the judge dismissed the case. Mm. Um, from that point, um, uh, you were a fugitive I, I, for two I, years. Yes, a fugitive for two years. So, so uh, after that point, um, a few others in the city heard about it, and I was invited to a lecture and shared that information. But even before I, the, the case was dismissed, I was doing lectures there in the city, and police officers were coming to the lectures, knowing that I had a warrant for my arrest, but they would not arrest me mm. um, because I had um, perfected a lien process of leaning the officer's badge and his insurance and taking his gun Hold up. taking his job. Okay, so this is um, the uncensored version I could cuss. How the fuck you do that? Well, every police officer takes an oath uh, with the insurance company that provides a bond for him to carry his weapon. And if you should file a lien against that bond with the county, then the officer has to satisfy that lien against him within 45 days, otherwise he loses his insurance. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, because we have officers in the city of Boston that have been um, investigated multiple times for brutality. The individuals that were brutalized can get that badge number and file a lien against that officer. We, we perfected the lien document, file a lien against that officer. The officer would have 45 days to satisfy that lien he would lose his insurance. That means that he can't carry the gun. That means that the department would have to fire him because he can't fulfill policy. Book, 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 book. Every officer that has ever put their hands on you, every officer that has an internal investigation going on on them right now, and the, what is it, the 75 internal investigations that have been ignored since 2013, can you got, how do we put liens? How do we contact you for liens? Well, I, again, it's it's a it's a it's a membership thing because membership we're, is seventy five dollars. Yes, seventy five dollars. That. That's less than a pair of Jordans. That's dinner. That's a date in a movie. Okay, seventy five dollars for a membership fee, and it's not NAACP seventy five dollars a year. It, uh, reoccurring coming out of your account is one time seventy five dollars. So we pay our seventy five dollar membership, and we give you the entire lean package from beginning to to, to end as a member and, and we help to facilitate. We'll we'll facilitate in, in, in going to the police department ourselves on your behalf. We do that often. This is what this is one of the things that we do for our members. We go to court for them with them and we help them to process the necessary communications that they need in dealing with the courts. Do you have members that have not been adopted or members that do not have colored on a birth certificate? Do you have members that, you know, just really believe in what the organization, it's not even an organization because you guys are on a dot org, um, believe in what you, what is it considered? Because mm. it's, it's not an organization. We, we're, we, we are an organization. We're an institution. Uh, we're an indigenous people's institution. Um, so do you have people that are not, that are like, listen, I, I'm, I'm. In other words, do we have supporting members? Yes. Yes, we have supporting members. Uh, they would. Pretty much join NAAIP the same way that the uh, regular members do. It's just that the application is just a little different. But yes, we have supporting members, and supporting members join NAAIP for fifty-five dollars. They don't get all of the other um, protections and things of that nature. They're just a supporting member. What if I'm a Haitian American? What if I'm Haitian? Okay. They told me, you know, I'm from Haiti. And um, I, I don't know where I come from. Like all of the Caribbean, like mm -hmm. all Caribbean peoples. Is their process different from an African-American? Yes, it is. But not tremendously different. It's all about heritage. 
If you're from Haiti, then you came from a village somewhere. Your people came from a village. What's the name of that village? Who was the colonizer of Haiti? Is that colonizer gone? Has all the debts been paid by that colonizer? If not, then you make claims against that colonizer in your trust, and you place it on the, the public record, and you place it on record in Haiti. You file your land claims there in Haiti. That's how that's done. Whatever country you're from, that's where you file your land claims. If you're from Brazil, you file it in Brazil. Kevin McNeil said he got his application from Brother Ray Watson. Mm -hmm. So did you fill out your application? Is your application done? <laughs> Is it a long application? Is it like, you know, I'm trying to get my Section 8 papers and it's 22 pages? It's a very short application. Really? Yeah. Yes. Do you have one on you? Uh, no, but it's a three-page document, just just basic, simple information, um, nothing extreme. You're required to have the extreme information in your possession, like the birth certificate or any other uh, detailed information recognizing you as, as an Indian. We and don't, we, don't, we don't need those forms. For those that do not have that birth certificate that is looking to be adopted and um, to no longer become a United States citizen, you can still vote. But they just can't arrest you. They have to send you to your tribe to right. have your tribe deal with you. Right. We've had a we've had a number of individuals who can't find color on their birth certificate, but they've been able to find their Indian tribe. How? Like just going back through yes. their generations? Yes. And it has happened over and over and over again because it's just that prevalent that we exist that way and we existed that way. Do you assist in finding who my ancestors are? We assist. What do you guys think? I want your I, I want your honest opinions. Um, whether you're um, replying live or w whether you're watching this at a later date, I'm really interested in everyone's opinions about denouncing your citizenship as an American and becoming, in a sense, a naturalized you're like a naturalized American. You're not even a... Uh, and... You're a foreign national. You are individuals that occupied these lands and the United States came and conquered those lands. So those people are considered foreign nationals. Mm. What are some of the fears people have um, about re denouncing their citizenship? Social security. Health security. That's what we hear a lot of. Mm -hmm. But as a dual citizen, the United States owes you the Social Security. Mm -hmm. So you haven't lost anything. And health care is provided to American Indians across the board. So health care is not an issue. So what about college? Education is not an issue. Because what? educational provisions are already mandated and laid out by the federal government for Indians. What about, so I'm being real selfish right mm -hmm. now and real petty. Mm -hmm. So what about the fact that when I was a United States citizen, I accumulated some student loan debt, and now I am a native aboriginal American, and mm -hmm. I am no longer a citizen, and I don't want to pay my student loans. When we filed our claim against the Commerce Department, the Commerce Department operates all finance for the United States government, all educational Loans, all every, all every facet of commerce in this country goes through the Commerce Department. The Commerce Department approves what amount of money is needed for the Educational Department. For all of the rest of the departments in the United States government, it comes through the Commerce Department. So, because the Commerce Department regulates all of those financial institutions and lines of credit, the Commerce Department built the Census Bureau. The Census Bureau used false information and misidentification and misclassification of Aborigine people to make them African Americans and secured loans from the IMF and China and other institutions on behalf of those individuals. Are you talking That's about fraud. my straw man? That's fraud. Is that what you're talking about, my the, straw man? It, ex that your straw man, your physical man, all of that was used to secure these loans from these agencies and they didn't get your permission. That's fraud. That's constructive fraud. So we filed a claim of constructive fraud against the Commerce Department. And the Inspector General of the United States 
ordered the Commerce Department to satisfy the claim. So long story short, the Commerce is about to pay my student loans? Inside of the document that we filed against the Commerce Department, we expressed that all debts, bonds, liens, prison bonds, everything be removed from the individuals that were listed on this petition. Y'all yeah, better get in before Barack get out. This is really a serious, in all seriousness, this is a call of action. Like, you gotta go check grandma's birth certificate, great grandma's birth certificate, even check death certificates. Maybe she died or he died prior to um, the system changing colored versus whatever they've been adding on as of now. But go look at those birth certificates. Go look at those death certificates. I have a friend, Shintora, I'm going to call you out again. Um, Shintora been in my family since I was a little girl, so she's a cousin. And she was like, Taylor, you know, my mother's birth certificate says colored. I'm like, colored? No, it doesn't. And she sent it to me. And she's she can't be more than 50 years old, 55 years old. And her birth certificate says colored. So go and check your mama, go check your grandmama, go check your granddaddy, go check everybody's birth certificate. Go down to the registry of documents. Vital statistics. Vital statistics. Get a copy of that birth certificate. Quick, because they're changing them. And as soon as, we, you know we had this conversation, right? You know we had this conversation on air. You know the feds don't like me. I'm not a, they don't like me. I'm not, they're not fans. Uh, but they listen. Uh, so... Be mindful, do your due diligence, and hurry the hell up. Now, if. I'm right here. That's right. <laughs> I'll be right out. Is that Blaine Teddy? Yes. Aww. Um, any last words? Anything you want, like a call to action? Anything you want to say to the people? Anything they need to Google? Books they oh the um they they did want that book list the Barack Obama book list mm -hmm. um anything you want to say Hima join the movement that's it you know this it's it's really not a whole lot to be said because it's it's so late and and I, I don't, and I don't want to to uh, present any false hopes um, you know individuals the only thing that they can do is quickly come to NAAIP. And that may sound like some sort of marketing pitch, but it's not because I don't need new members. I don't want new members because the work is just too tumultuous at this, at this point. Uh, but I do want as many people to uh, come forward as possible for their own benefit, for their own sake. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it. You know, um, we can assist, but the clock is ticking and the, and, and the time is very short. Okay, last question really quickly. You said that we need to set up a trust, and you, you're going to assist us in setting up a trust. What does that look like for a Taylor Andre trust? Taylor Andre, being from uh, what 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 um, you, from Trinidad, there's a place in Trinidad where your people were from. It had a name, so you find that name, and that village of where your people are from becomes the name of your trust, and the names that your people use to identify them becomes the names that you use to identify yourself and your people under the trust. It's a it's a five page document that um, that establishes your freedom. It's just like Noble Drew Ali did a trust for the Moorish Science Temple. The problem that 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 incurred is that Noble Drew did not add governmental provisions into the trust. Mm. That's why the Moors cannot function as a government. It's already been a, been 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 adjudicated by the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court ruled that because Noble Drew did not put governmental provisions into the trust that it was not a governmental institution, that it was strictly a religious institution. Mm, mm. I'm going to get out. I'm going to get my chakras aligned because this man right here, all he got to do is hug you. I don't care <laughs> how clogged your pineal gland is. You're about to be able to, I can't tell you the dreams I've had since I've hugged this man. So mm. I'm about to get my hug on. I uh, love you. Appreciate you. Hope you have an awesome day. Jules, you want to say something? <laughs> The intern is learning. <laughs> <laughs>